welcome back we were discussing in fundamental of electronics the filters the last topic that we took is basically the choke input filter we have discussed that choke input filter is rarely used and it's not that famous because of its bulkiness the next topic that we will take is basically the capacitor input filter and its application in power system and the devices so capacitor input filter produce the dc output which is equal to the peak value of the rectified voltage so the rectification principle require us a diode in this case we take one idle diode the source that we give is basically the ac source which is having a certain frequency the output that we are going to take is across the capacitor so the dc voltage which is produced across the capacitor will be equal to the peak value of the rectified voltage so we have the rectified voltage means ac to dc conversion so we will be having the peak value as vm here so the voltage that we have in the capacitor is vm this is widely used in various power supplies and quite famous as compared to the choke input filter when we talk about the circuit components we basically required ac source which is the source which is able to produce the ac voltage of a definite magnitude one diode the diode obviously will be a practical diode in this case we have taken idle diode for the explanation and the capacitor the requirement is to produce the voltage v output across the load which is constant without having any fluctuation when the input is basically the ac input the diode will act as closed switch when it is turned on and open switch when it is turned off and the capacitor will then charge or discharge depending upon whether the diode is on or off so when the diode is off the capacitor will be uncharged and when the diode is closed the capacitor will be charged so the operation of the capacitor input filter initially we take a capacitor which is basically uncharged so no charge is present in the initial condition which is equal to zero during first quarter cycle so if we talk about one cycle of the ac wave and we talk about one quarter of the cycle of the ac wave the diode will be forward biased forward biased means the diode is closed switch is on and the voltage is produced so capacitor start charging so it means that if the switch which is closed then the initially uncharged capacitor now has started charging the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to the source voltage so whatever the voltage we are giving and the input that is the voltage appearing across the capacitor and it is able to charge the capacitor capacitor voltage will be the maximum voltage of which is appearing across the diode so the diode is given a supply which is ac input here and the diode is rectifying the voltage so we are getting a maximum voltage here vm and the capacitor will start charging to the maximum voltage after the peak value the diode will turned off now this diode will be turned off when the peak value of the ac waveform is becoming less so after the one quarter cycle now the ac waveform has reduced so the diode has opened and the capacitor stays charged even though the diode is open whatever the capacitor voltage is there the charge will be there we know that capacitor do not allow a sudden change in the voltage so the output voltage now is basically constant which is the maximum voltage now what happen if we have the load register in the network so here we have the load register which is connected at the output end in parallel with the capacitor so we connect it in parallel with the capacitor and capacitor remains charged if the rlc time constant of that will be greater than its time period so the voltage is already present now in the capacitor it is charged and considering that the time constant of the capacitor is greater than its time period output voltage will be there and it will be having small ripple so we can see that we are having small ripple at the output in case of the half wave rectifier so this is again the half wave rectifier because we are using one diode 
if we have the full wave cycle then we have the continuous ripples which are present in the output and we are having the output voltage so if we talk about the ripple the diode when it is off between the peaks so peaks will appear in each half cycle and the rectification will need two peaks in one full cycle so the capacitor will discharge through the load register capacitor supplies the load current so whatever when the diode is off this voltage which is present in the capacitor will supply the current in the load so peak to peak ripple will now be small the diode reaches recharges capacitor to peak voltage when next peak arrives so what happened actually in one half cycle we'll have one peak where the diode will be off and the capacitor will come into its action in the next half cycle again when other peak will come then the capacitor will again be charged so diode recharges the capacitor to the peak voltage always when the next peak appears we have two type of full wave rectifier one is center tapped another is the bridge rectifier and these reduces the peak to peak ripple by half so compared to the half wave rectifier if we talk about the full wave especially the bridge rectifier is good one which we will see later later so it reduces the peak to peak ripple by half the full wave rectifier the capacitor discharges for half the time compared to the half wave rectifier so half wave rectifier will have only one rectified output voltage and here the peak value where the capacitor is charged so we are having the charging of the capacitor to here and then it comes into picture of the action where but when you have the full wave rectification you will have two half cycle so capacitor will discharge for half the time in the half wave rectifier if we talk about the ripple formula so the ripple voltage which is basically given by peak to peak ripple voltage vr it is equal to the dc load current i and divided by the product of f into c where f is the ripple frequency and c is the capacitance value the usage of this filter is approximation and not exact and you required certain results which may be coming from the circuit simulation generally we use different software for the circuit simulation such as multi sim let us take one example of data where the dc load current is 10 milliampere and the capacitor value is 200 microfarad the ripple frequency being 120 hertz so the ripple voltage that we get is basically the current which is 10 milliampere and we have the frequency and capacitor product so it is 120 hertz into 200 microfarad that gives the ripple voltage peak to peak as 0.417 if we talk about the measurement method we basically use oscilloscope which is digital oscilloscope for accurate measurement because ac voltmeter will not give you correct measurement and will introduce error up to 25% if we want to convert the rms voltage from the peak voltage we have to divide it with root 2 so convert the peak to peak value to the rms value what are the different factors that affect the dc load voltage so you will be having certain diode drops so that has to be subtracted from the peak value you can have additional voltage drop due to heavy diode conduction during the brief period or transformer winding and diode bulk resistance so so many factors are there which will be impacting the dc load voltage so these are the practical conditions we have to take into account and the calculation of idle output or output with diode approximation can be there so either the diode can be idle in general academic but when we talk about the practical diodes we'll have some diode approximation actual diodes a dc voltage is slightly lower so whatever the voltage you get from the idle condition the practical condition you will get a little bit lower because you have certain drops we take one problem the problem is on half wave rectifier and the use of capacitor input filter so when we talk about half wave rectifier obviously we will have only one diode we are using the transformer which is step down transformer to bring down the voltage the transformation ratio is 5 is to 1 and the input we are taking as 120 volt 60 hertz which is given at the primary of the transformer so the secondary voltage v2 that we get 
is basically 120 volt by 5 because the input we have 120 volt and the transformation ratio we have 5 it gives 24 volt now this 24 volt has to be converted to peak value because all calculation has to be done in peak value hence we divide 24 volt with root 2 that is 0 0.707 that gives 34 volt so what voltage we get here is basically 34 volt that is basically the maximum voltage now the load voltage across the load register when the diode is on is basically 34 volt maximum and if we find the current so this voltage will be divided with the register value that is 5 kilo ohms and we get 6.8 milliampere means the current which is flowing in the load register is 6.8 milliampere these two register and capacitor are in parallel so it both will have the same voltage Hence, the ripple voltage whatever we have in the capacitor is basically given by the formula of current by frequency and the capacitor. Frequency is given to be 60 Hz and the capacitor value is 100 microfarad. Current we have estimated at 6.8 milliampere. So, we are getting the peak to peak value as 1.13. So, we approximate as 1.1 volt. Now, if the same problem we connect full wave rectifier in the form of center tap so we require two diodes and the transformer secondary will be center tapped in that case in the previous we were having the v2 as 34 volt now in this case we will divide the 34 by 2 because it is a center tapped we get 17 volt so 17 volt is the one which is appearing across the dc load voltage and hence the load current will be equal to 3.4 mini ampere because we have to divide with 5 kilo ohm register ripple voltage now we have the current is 3.4 mili ampere frequency 120 hertz and 100 microfarad capacitor we have so that gives to be 0 0.83 as the peak voltage so we take 0 0.28 approximation now if the rectifier is full wave but in the form of a bridge so we are having four diodes in the full wave rectifier and the voltage v2 will be now in this case as 34 volt similar to your full wave rectifier but not half as in center tap so these 34 volt will be appearing here across the load register and hence the current we will take 34 volt by 5 kilo ohms which gives to be 6.8 milliampere the ripple frequency or sorry voltage we will compute from the current by frequency into the capacitor value frequency is 120 hertz we take 0 0.56 as the final solution or rounded up to 0 0.57 as the peak voltage if we compare the half wave full wave center tap and the bridge rectifier so the output voltage that we have from the transformer we have and the ripple voltage we can find out so if we see this data comparing the bridge rectifier with half wave rectifier so bridge rectifier is having the ripple voltage 0 0.566 and the half rectifier we have 1.13 so obviously less ripple is there in the bridge rectifier if we compare the bridge rectifier with the full wave rectifier so bridge rectifier we see 34 volt we are getting at the output but full wave we are getting 17 volt so it is twice the output voltage in bridge rectifier hence the bridge rectifier are the most popular and basically used along with the capacitor filter so the topic we have covered two important filters one is the choke filter and another is the capacitor input filter in the coming lecture we are going to discuss further on different topics in the rectifier circuit thank you for now see you in the next lecture